In this video, I'm gonna show you why using the proper frame rate is so important and why some of you are missing 20% or more of your slow motion. This is gonna to apply to anybody that's using different frame rates on a Premiere Pro timeline, and specifically for Canon R6 users using 120 frames per second, trying to export in 24 frames a second. Now this problem can crop up on any type of camera that you use with a varying different types of frame rates. If you are using PAL or NTSC, you're gonna have different frame rates as well. Now I'm gonna show you these clips side by side in real time and then I'm gonna slow it down frame by frame to show you what's happening and why it's going wrong. Now there it is in real time. Now I'm gonna slow it down and show it to you frame by frame so that you can see exactly what's happening and what's going wrong to make this footage look a lot worse. Now the footage on the left side is properly adjusted to this timeline so that every frame is showing and you're getting 100% of the slow motion. And the right hand side is just dropped into the sequence without actually having the proper editing done to it. But as you can see, this is the very first frame that both the mushrooms come into frame. So frame one, they're both at the same spot. Frame two, they're also both at the same spot. But frame three, the mushroom on the left has is in frame three, but the mushroom on the right is in frame four. So there's another one. There's an extra frame right in there in the splashes on the left-hand side. But as you can see in slow motion, it just goes smoother on the left-hand side and it goes a little bit slower. And there's five extra frames in every second on the left-hand side. Now this applies whether you're using 60 frames a second or you've shot in 30 and you need it on a 24 time frame. So I'm gonna show you the math behind it and then I'm gonna show you the quickest way to edit this footage to look like it should. Okay, so here's our mushroom clip right here, just dropped in and it's still at 29. 0.97, so 30 frames a second over here. Once again, this is gonna have the same little choppy missing of the frames here and there, so five frames less per second. In order to get this to exactly where it needs to go, we're gonna go over to the calculator, and we're gonna take the sequence for the timeline, which we can find in sequence, sequence settings, time base, which is 24 frames a second. You can also change this if you wanted 25 or any of the other frame rates for your sequence because your sequence is gonna automatically be set by the first clip you drop in here. So if I was to drop this one in first, it would be 30 frames a second. So now we know what the frame rate of the sequence is. So we're gonna take the sequence setting, which is 24, and we're gonna divide that by 30, which is the clip frame rate, and we're gonna multiply that by 100, which is gonna give us 80%. So we need this clip right here to be at 80% in order for it to not drop any of those frames. So we're gonna right mouse click, go down to show clip keyframes, time remapping, and speed. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this down. So it should usually be at 100%. And then we're gonna drop it down to exactly 80%. Now that's gonna be our smooth clip and it's not gonna skip any of those frames as it goes through here. The second and much better way that you should be doing this with all of your clips before you actually put them onto the timeline, and this is gonna eliminate all of this math that you're gonna have to do, but I wanted you to know this so that you'd have the basis for understanding how and why this works. So if you come over here and you go to Modify, Interpret Footage, and then you go to Assume This Frame Rate, and you go in here and you put your 23.976, hit okay. Now, when you drop this in, it's already gonna be at that frame rate that it needs to be. And it's gonna be exactly what it needs to be without you having to do any of that extra editing that I show you or any of that math. Now, the only time that you're gonna run into problems is let's say you shot something in 30 frames a second and you want it to be on a timeline with 24. Then what you're gonna have to do if you actually have something that's in shot in 30 frames a second and you want it to be on a 24 frames a second timeline, you go into and you just simply modify it, interpret footage, put it once again down to 23.976, press enter, and when you move this over onto your timeline, 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the math in reverse. Instead of doing the sequence first, you do the clip. And so you take 30 divided by 24 equals times 100 equals, so you need to move this to 125. So once again, you go into show keyframes, time mapping speed, and move it to 125. Then that will give you your real time footage that's not missing any of the keyframes and still be the same as the rest of your sequence there. Now this will allow you to convert the 30 frames a second into the 24 frames a second so that your timeline doesn't have any of these weird glitching motions in it. So check out this video if you're a YouTuber and want to upgrade your image quality on YouTube with one simple trick that was gonna help you. Thank you for watching on this channel. We go everything mirrorless, Canon cameras. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're into that. Thank you so much for watching.